Washington football fans, welcome to Victory Monday. Isn't it so great to have a victory against the Carolina Panthers yesterday? It was a solid, great game. It was another complete game from the Washington football team. Defense, offense, especially Taylor Heineke had another great day. I mean, wow. I'm sorry I'm adjusting my camera because... I'm being as unprofessional as I possibly can. So let's talk about, let's do a little bit of a recap on the stats here. Taylor Heineke was 16 of 22, 206 yards, three touchdown passes. Terry McLaurin had a touchdown pass, I believe. Yes, yes, Taylor, Terry McLaurin, touchdown pass. DeAndre Carter, another touchdown pass. Boy, was he a find. Man, I tell you what, um, who else had a touchdown pass yesterday? Oh, Cam Sims, of course. My man Cam Sims had a touchdown pass yesterday. Now, we do have to talk about Antonio Gibson now. Antonio Gibson continues to be a fumbler, and... There, there has already been a lot of fans who have put Gibson in the same category as Matt Jones. I, I, you know, I'll say this. I think that Gibson has shown a lot more than what Matt Jones showed us. Gibson is, if he can hold on to the ball, I mean, this dude is, I mean, he is an excellent running back. He just needs to learn to protect the ball, and that was the reason why he was out for the whole second quarter. And Ron Rivera was like, okay, you're not going to lose this football game for us by continuing to fumble like that. Especially, well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's even worse probably if you fumble in your own territory. But fumbling in the red zone, you're taking points off the board, man. You're giving it back to the other team. So Ron Rivera sat him down. And guess what? J.D. McKissick came in and, I mean, wow. Wow. Another great find that we had last year, J.D. McKissick. I mean, man, I, I, you know, it's funny how sometimes you see these players like this and it's like, how did other teams not see this talent? But Ron Rivera saw the talent, definitely for sure. And, I mean, J.D. McKissick came in, did not miss a beat. Um, you know, uh Oh, my mind is going blank because I am still halfway asleep. Jarrett Patterson got in there, had some good runs as well. Uh, he had seven carries, actually, 23 yards. Uh, Taylor Heineke had more rushing yards than, than Jarrett Patterson. But Antonio Gibson, 19 carries, 95 yards. J.D. McKissick had 46 yards on seven carries. So, I mean, our... I think we had a total of what was like over 190 yards rushing yesterday. I mean, when you can run the rock like that, you're going to win the football game. Um, the defense held up. Now, you know, that first drive, I was kind of like, okay, all right, I guess we're back to this now. We're, we're back to the defense being porous, allowing the first score, uh, forcing the team to play behind the sticks the whole time. But... Besides, you know, three three drives by Cam Sims and, and the Panthers, you know, the defense played really well. They did. Uh, you're not going to stop McCaffrey. I mean, he is just, he's one of the best running backs in the league. He's going to get his, you know, and, and just, it's going to be a battle. And then you add, uh, you, you know, you add Cam Newton in there as well. With Newton being that dual threat, um, and yeah, I mean, but I think we honestly, we contained Newton pretty well, except for that one touchdown run that Newton had. It's like, what, a 23, 28-yard run. You know, we pretty much contained him. Now, he had a good day. Cam Newton had a good day. So, I mean, for the Panthers, hey, I respect the Panthers. Um, you know, they're kind of the hometown team here in, in North Carolina, so, you know, I, I have to, 
uh, respect the Panthers enough to say that, you know, Cam Newton played well. And I think that, I think Carolina's where Newton should have been the whole time, should have stayed. Um, yeah, he is not the quarterback that he was, you know, 10 years ago, but he can still be very effective and he's healthy now. So, you know, I, I think that Matt Rule has, you know, if he can continue to develop Cam Newton in terms of him getting used to their offensive playbook, Carolina's going to be fine. But let's not talk about Carolina. Let's talk about our Washington football team. Let's talk about how Taylor Heineke, man, you know, I was down on him in the last couple of uh, videos or a few videos back. You know, I was, I was like, all right, you know, Taylor Heineke is a good backup quarterback. He's going to come in and win a couple of games for you, but he is not a starter. I, I may come back to eat those words. You know, I, I am just fine eating crow on that one because Taylor Heineke has shown nothing less than being a starting quarterback and a successful starting quarterback in this league with the last couple of games. He went in, he went against two of the best defenses in the league, and he played well. I mean, he played really well. The only thing that I would like to see Taylor Heineke do less of is throw off his back foot. He There were times where he did not have to throw off his back foot. He could have stopped playing at his foot and thrown a better pass. Uh, one in particular was that incomplete pass to Terry McLaurin in the end zone. Had and he had time that he could have stopped playing his foot, passed. He might would have taken a hit, but that would have probably been six right there. And he threw off his back foot. So that is a knock on Taylor Heineke. He's going to have to learn not to throw off his back foot so much. Other than that, he has played. I mean, he's played error-free football. He's made plays and. You can't ask for more than that. I mean, I'm telling you, you know, I went from, you know, saying he's, you know, great story and all that. He's just not, you know, we we need a franchise quarterback to now. I'm, you know, the question is, is what size of jersey should I get? You know, because I'm telling you, Taylor Heineke keeps playing like this throughout the rest of the season. There is no doubt in my mind that, he should be the starting quarterback next year, or he should definitely be in within the conversation. You can still go ahead and draft a quarterback, but you don't need to start him right away, and that could be a great situation for the Washington football team next year. Um, you know, Antonio Gibson, if we can learn, if he if he can learn to hold on to the football, I mean, we're going to be solid at running back. We need to we need to hold on to J.D. McKissick as well. I think Jer Jarrett Patterson is you know, going to develop into a fine running back. Receivers, I mean, yeah, you know, Terry McLaurin is the guy. Um, haven't seen anything from Diami Brown. I'm starting to feel like that was probably a miss. Um, so we may be looking at another wide receiver next year. But, you know, I'm just saying this team is starting to come together. They're really playing well despite the fact that we have had some major losses, you know, losing Chase Young for the season, losing Montez Sweat for most of the rest of this season. You know, those are our two strong bookends, and the Panthers were taking advantage of that, you know, getting out to the edge on the outside there, and that was, that's going to be our weakness right now. At least until if we can get Montez Sweat back, you know, that's going to solidify the d defensive in position a little bit, but you know that that's that's going to be a point of emphasis. The thing is, we still got pressure up the middle. You know, John Allen, Dron Payne, who had that that sack to pretty much seal the deal on the game yesterday. I mean, those two guys. I was I was wondering. That was the big question in the last video. Can those two guys? you know, continued to play well despite not having Chase Young and uh, Montez Sweat? The answer is yes, they can. So, you know, I have no worries with that. Um, I do have a worry. I, I, I'm still not sold on William Jackson. I saw him playing so far off of the receivers yesterday, especially that one pass I saw 
um, to um, McCaffrey. It was like, dude, you need to go up there and stick him. But he played, it looked like he was off of him like 10, 15 yards. I mean, you can't do that. I, I understand you don't want to give up the big play, but at the same time, you've got to be able to press these wide receivers. you got to knock them off of their routes. And so I just have not been impressed by him. Now, hopefully we get St. Juice back. I think he's still developing into a fine cornerback. Um, we do need his help a lot. Uh, now, Danny Johnson, though, he's done pretty well filling in. And he, he made some good plays yesterday for us when we needed it. Um, offensive line. You know, the offensive line played exceptionally well, despite the fact that we have had some injuries. You know, Sam Cosme got banged up again yesterday. Um, we went through like three centers yesterday. Uh, so, you know, that's tough. But, you know, despite all that, it was like next man up. The, the, the offensive line didn't miss a beat. They opened up running lanes for these running backs. They gave Taylor Heineke just enough time. You know, so, you know, my hat's off. I thought the offensive line played their behinds off yesterday. I mean, they just really did well. Uh, so, my, yeah, again, my hat's off to them on that. Um, you know, just overall, this team is playing with fire. Taylor Heineke is, is the one who is firing them up as well. You know, he took that um, hit on that slide there, got up and just stared at the defender, I mean, you know, this guy's playing with some fire, man. And I love it. I, I love Taylor Heineke. I, I'm, I'm telling you, this guy, I hope that he continues to develop. I mean, how awesome would it be that we would not have to necessarily be in such a hurry to, to draft another quarterback if, if Heineke is able to continue winning games for us? What would be the reason, you know, to, to go through and try to – you know, mortgage the future on a quarterback pick next year. And he, and if you still do, you don't have to play him right away. But, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it, man. This is great. Two games in a row for the Washington football team. They're four and six. Got some work for them. Um, they're, they're playing Seattle next Monday night at home. Seattle is reeling right now. They're three and seven, I believe. You know, Wilson is back, but he's struggling. The team is struggling. This is a good time. The Washington football team needs to put together another solid, complete game that can keep on winning. If they can, if they can beat these teams, I know that they have a chance to beat. You know, and they can get into this NFC East stretch toward the end of the season. They have a chance. You know, I, I hate it that it seems like. Every year they start out, you know, two and six, and, you know, it, they don't really start playing good football until they're two and six. But, hey, I guess it's sometimes it's better, you know, late than never, right? Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe. I'm going to see you in the next one. Health to the Washington football team. Let's go Maniacs.